at Brown Girls Brunch damn near turned into a bunch of bitches boxing. <laughs> Mo and I am back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Miami, y'all. This is season three, episode 11, pressing forward, y'all. Before we get started, the auntie gonna give you a little ski taste. I'm gonna take a little ski taste myself. Make sure you clean your hands before you bring your ass up in here. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, church announcements. If you have not done so, done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know that you stopped by before you leave. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Make sure your notification bells are turned on because y'all already know how my ass do. Look here. This video is going to be late. I'm going to let y'all know right now. This, this video going to be late. I got a lot going on this week. And um, I'm going on vacation soon. So um, this video is going to be late. But look here. I'm going to have it for y'all. Okay. Hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on up into it. So it picks up with Trick coming and surprising them. Y'all know he was not going to leave Trina hanging. Especially during this important time. They're doing a whole memorial ceremony for her mom. You know they're in the Bahamas. They're the only supposed to, um, you know, after they do this ceremony. They're supposed to have this big party with the family. Whoop, whoop, yada, yada, yada. Now Trick starts clowning on Bobby because his uh, he don't like that Bobby done made some turkey bacon. Y'all know Trick is a real certified hood ass nigga. He don't know what the hell turkey bacon is. So real, to him, that ain't real not, if it ain't If it ain't leaking lard, it ain't real ass goddamn bacon. So this nigga's like, what the fuck is this faking bacon that you've given me? Um, he just starts clowning on his ass, right? And so we also get to meet Trina's sister, Laura. That is her damn twin. She looks exactly like Trina, y'all. Exactly like her. So we get to meet her, and you know, they just all chopping up because it's Bobby, Trina, Joy, um, Trina's sister, Laura, and Trick. Like I said, he comes and surprises him. And so basically, they tell Trick Daddy that you're going to have to cook for the rest of the trip because we ain't finna, nigga, you, you here now, you cook for a living at Sunday's Best or whatever the hell it's called. I'm gonna need you to get in this goddamn kitchen after the night and put down the way you goddamn do. I bet you that nigga could good. Any nigga that got a lot of darkness on their neck or just a whole lot of neck in general, they be throwing down on some goddamn soul food. I know that nigga food go hard. Y'all, so today is the day that Suki is having this brown girl's brunch, right? Now, if y'all remember from my pink teacup reviews that I used to do on, uh, what was that? Hustle and Soul. When um, homegirl would use Anna would have these brown girl brunches, y'all already know the shit is ratchet. It don't never work out the way you think it's supposed to work out, right? Now the whole thing is supposed to be about women empowerment. She wants to show the world that she's more than Sukiana, that she is destiny, the mom, the entrepreneur, the businesswoman, all that good stuff, right? Now Chameleonaire comes in there, uh, no Chameleon on. Uh, what's the bitch name? I don't count this bitch Chameleonaire. What's her name? Chameleon comes there and like helps her set up and helps her get everything together now she like look here i ain't with no drama nothing like that we gotta be all on some positive shit tonight anybody coming here with that bullshit we ain't finna have that that was supposed to be the whole reason once again this brown girl's brunch it don't never work out how these how, how, how they how they have in their mind or how you think it's supposed to work out right now, before we get to the brown girl's brunch, Amada is chopping it up with Mamiana. Now, Mamiana is telling her, like, hey, what are you doing? You look sad all the time. She still misses MJ. She wants MJ back. She feeling bad about the whole situation with her and MJ, right? So, Mamiana's like, look, you need to go on. You need to go on like, the fiesta. Forget about him. And just worry. Don't just worry yourself. Don't think about him. So, she tells Mamiana that Tip invited her to this brown girl's brunch. She gonna go there because it's supposed to be all about women of color coming together. This whole women's empowerment and so they supposed to be getting together to do something special right so i kind of had a feeling that prima donna would show up to the whole thing i was like before i could even see clips of it i was like this is gonna be some old messy shit whenever it's supposed to be something positive with a bunch of women and you put a bunch of hood bitches in one room i'm sorry i ain't down in my females but the shit don't never turn out the way you think it's supposed to turn out 
Uh, so it's actually the night of Trina's mama's ceremony that they have, right? Well, it's still kind of during the day. They're out on the beach. They have her urn there with her ashes. I don't know if they spread her ashes out there or what, but they kept saying that she wanted to come back to the Bahamas before she passed away. And so they finally brought her back to the Bahamas. So again, I don't know if they kept her there on the beach sprayed out on the beach or what they did. I don't know what they did. But anyways, they're there on the beach. They had a nice little ceremony for her. Um, Joy said some nice words. I like what Trick said. Trick said him and his boys growing up, they called her Miss 15th Ave. They didn't know a lot about women, but they knew that they, went, they wanted women that walked, talked, and acted like Miss Vanessa. You know, she was like their, their epitome or of women that, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they, the kind of women that they wanted in their lives. And, um, Bobby was up there. Child, Bobby be so goddamn extra. I can't take, especially not with all this shit in his face. I can't take Bobby as serious no goddamn mo. Bobby up there being all extra, saying like, if it wasn't for Trina's mama, then Joy and Trick would never be together. Joy like, yeah, and look where the fuck we is today. But continue. You show right, praise God. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Everybody didn't said their little speech, whatever. Bobby ass is all super emotional. And Bobby just does the extraness. He just does the absolute mostness. Later on, um, that night, they end up having, like I said, this little party back at the house that they had. And Trina's just, you know, she's in her room. She's on her knees praying and just reflecting on the time that she's had with her mom. And she's just grateful for the time that she's had for her and just, you know, asking her to guide over her and watch over over her as she makes these next steps in her life like what the next moves are gonna be she just wants her mom to be there with her and y'all i ain't gonna lie it, it made me break down because y'all know i lost my mother to cancer as well and child everything she feeling she finna go through a bunch of stages. Anybody out there that lost your mama, shout out to you i love you your auntie pray for you because i done been there me and my husband both have lost our mothers so we already know what she going through and um yeah, Trina, I love you, girl. You the baddest bitch. Y'all, yeah, so it's the night of the brown girls brunch, right? Everybody's showing up. Tip is there. Prima Donna shows up like I thought her ass would. I had a feeling, but I wasn't sure, but her ass showed up. Um, of course, Chameleon is there. Hood Brad is there. Amada ends up showing up, right? Now, everybody's sitting back there talking, and it's real nice. The atmosphere is like real girl power with it. You know what I'm saying? All of that. So everybody's sort of telling their stories and their experiences that they had growing up being brown skin. Like um, Tip was saying, and she wasn't light, I mean, she wasn't dark enough, so, because all of her cousins, everybody around her was dark skin, how she wanted to be dark skin, yet hood brat was the opposite. She hated her dark skin, she hated being dark skin growing up, like, that's the one thing that she hated about herself. Y'all, look, let me tell y'all, I wanted to have dark skin when I was younger. One of the, and I've said this before in other videos of mine, one of my best friends growing up, one of the most beautiful girls in elementary, junior high, and a high school was dark skin, Ebony Sorrells. To this day, y'all, we in our 40s. I'm damn near 40. She in her 40s now, and the bitch is still bad. <laughs> I mean, kind of just as dark as I don't know what, and bad as hell. Like, she was the one of the people that made me want to be dark skin just because her skin was so beautiful. So just to hear that, a lot, but then I would see that with a lot of my friends and stuff like that. But even just to hear that a lot of girls didn't want to be dark skin, they want to be light skin. It's like, dang, and I, I'm not dark or I'm not light skin, but I know I didn't want to be light skin, like, I was good. Bitch, this little old cough for torn me, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. She was doing so wild. So, anyways, they was all sharing stories. Prima Donna, girl, Prima Donna said they used to call her asking booty scratch. <laughs> that ain't funny. But it's funny, but it's not funny. African booty scratch, y'all, that's messed up. That's funny. That's funny to me. That shit is funny to me. But she was, like, telling her little story. Then Amada, you know, was telling her story growing up, like how she what she didn't fit in with the black people then when she got with the dominicans and the cubans and all of that her latin people she was too dark to fit in with them so like they wouldn't really consider her to be on their level so she really didn't know where she fit in here go prima donna with these side ass petty ass remarks that she say see i don't fucking like prima donna she's like okay so what do you identify with as it is now mind you amada's really not feeling prima donna because prima donna was the one that bought annie which was 
MJ's ex, which kind of set the fire off to get her and MJ to break up in the first damn place. Again, I have my own opinions on that. Everybody else got their own opinions about that. We're not going to get into that. But she kind of feels the way with Prima Donna because she, again, she was like, bitch, you could have told me that homegirl was going to pop up on the scene. You didn't even let me know that. You just had her spring up out of nowhere like, the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Again, Prima Donna feels like she didn't do nothing wrong. So that's a little back having a little, you know, animosity or whatever, right? And Prima Donna knows this. So she's sort of picking at Amada. Amada's trying to ignore her. In a way, I kind of felt like Amada was being like sort of rehearsed and robotic with it. Because she was just like smiling like, uh-huh. Yeah, bitch, I see you. Uh-huh. Yeah, bitch. She wasn't really responding until everybody else, Sukiana and Hood Brad, and they all like, okay, bitch, now what the hell is going on? Because it's obvious that y'all got some tension. After that, Amada was making it obvious. But then again, like I said, you could tell Prima Donna was being real petty and poking at her, right? Prima Donna um, was like, look at bitch, if you got something on your chest, you got something you need to say, just say it. Like, don't be up here fake and phony. Amada's finally like, look here, bitch, I think you need to mind your business, stay over there, don't worry about what the fuck I got going on over here, you worry about you. Everybody's like, damn, bitch, y'all got some problem going on, bitch, what's the tea? Spin it, let me know what the hell is going on. Finally, Prima Donna's like, look here, she's upset at me because I bought somebody from her past or MJ's past to come and let her know about her man, and so she's uh, uh, upset about that. Now... Again, I have, I'm not going to get into that. I got my own feelings. I got y'all own feelings. It is what it is. We can agree to disagree on that. Now, Hood Brad is like, look here, I done come for this ghetto shit. I could have stayed at the house if I was coming here for this ghetto shit. I thought we was coming to a brown girl brunch to sit up here and be on some black power shit, but y'all on some other shit. I'm finna leave, get the fuck on up out of here. Suki told her, girl, they don't fight like us. They just like to argue. Girl, sit your ass down. That shit was <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. So y'all, it's going back and forth. Finally, Sookie like, look here, I appreciate y'all hoes for coming now. You ain't gotta go home, but y'all bitches gotta get the hell on up out of here. This is not what the fuck I signed up for. That and Mona done already paid us for this scene, so we finna go ahead and get the fuck on up out of here. Afterwards, Prima Donna and Amada end up getting into it outside. Because once again, Prima Donna is coming up to Amada. Amada's trying to walk away and ignore this bitch. Prima Donna's like, look here, you can let me know what's going on. Like, what's the problem? You can even tell me what the problem is. Once again, being petty, bitch, you know what the problem is. You know what she upset about. Why even sit up there and continue to provoke and poke at this girl? Finally, Amada turns around and like, look here, bitch, I appreciate what you when you did this, this, that, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Prima Donna, once again, she she still doesn't see like what she did was wrong. She she can't take responsibility for anything that she did wrong in the situation. She's just like, you couldn't come to me and you couldn't tell me what the problem is. You just walked in on some badass energy. So even if you felt like she was on some bad energy, you felt the re uh, resolution to that would be to poke at her until she opened up about what the hell was going on. Like, I don't fuck with Prima Donna. Bitches like her. Huh? I don't like her. Y'all, Briscoe was in the studio. He doing a good little flow. I like the little rap. It was cute or whatever. He in the studio with Hood Brat. They sitting up there talking about their relationship problems. He got issues with Cello. He trying to work it on now. She having issues with Kenny. She love him, but she don't trust that nigga because he fucking married. Later on, Briscoe ends up going and looking at this house with Cello and his son, um, Snacks. I think that's what he called him. It's a cute little name. They end up going looking at this house. Back, he trying to get that old thing back. They finally agree to disagree and just get that old thing another chance and move on i like them together they cute i think she's beautiful i think he fine as hell they are beautiful handsome ass couple hopefully nigga you don't learn something when your ass was locked up that you need her it's cheaper to keep her because nigga if you ain't learned nothing by now cello don't get this nigga no more goddamn chances now for real y'all later on joy and trick end up chopping it up they talking about once again their relationship she didn't feel like he respected her and he loved her at a point of time he didn't feel appreciated she broke down crying because because of what he said, he just felt like, you know, she walked out on the point of time when he needed her and she felt like that was the right. Long story short, 
These niggas love each other and they just need to goddamn work it out. He ended up apologizing, like wholeheartedly apologizing for everything that he's ever done to her. And I thought that was sweet as hell. Hopefully they can work on their relationship. They can get back to a good ass point. But then again, she was like, nigga, I remember when, uh, you used to work out. You used to care about the way you look now, nigga. You all butt and no, no gut and no butt. Like, <sighs> Where they do that at? I know I'm gonna need you to help me out with this shit. But hopefully they can work their little relationship out. Because I like them. I think they cute. But look here, y'all. If there was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.